Welcome to this edition of The Roadie Reporter. I am your host for the segment, Mark Zakaria. Everybody who lives in Rhode Island pays property taxes one way or the other. So, what's the single biggest and most important government service you receive for the taxes you pay? Well, it's the public school system which is open to your children. Even if you never have kids yourself, you need to know that the next generation of Ocean State citizens can get along on their own. And basic education is the foundation of that survival skill. So, what do you do if the public schools in your zip code are failing miserably in providing that service? You could go run for the school committee and fix the problem from inside. <laughs> Unfortunately, even with the most optimum results, your kids will be long graduated by the time anything changes. The duration of that approach means there'd be no help for you. Your only real option is to find a school that achieves the results your kids deserve. There are plenty of great private schools in Rhode Island, but they all charge private tuition. Providence Country Day School costs just over $38,000 per year. Moses Brown comes in at about $200 less. That's after-tax dollars on top of the 80% share of your property taxes that still go to your failing public schools. Okay, okay. Most public school systems are not failing if you go by today's highly questionable assessment methods. If you live in a city or town that does offer subpar education, though, what can you do if you can't afford the cost of a new car each year to put your children through grade school? What indeed? That's the question which is being asked seriously by at least one caucus in the General Assembly. The idea is that if a parent takes a child out of the public system, some or all of that student's public allocation should go with him or her. It might not cover a top-ranked private school, but it will surely cover the cost of a schools with clearly demonstrated results superior to those of most public schools. And there is an added benefit that many miss. Competition. If 15 or 16,000 were available up front for each new private pay student, you can bet a slew of new charter schools and mayoral academies would quickly pop up to claim that resource. Heck, top-ranked public schools in other towns might just open their doors to students from surrounding towns too. So, what's the holdup? Why, the public service unions, of course. The National Education Association of Rhode Island maintains a strong presence on the donor lists of Ocean State House and Senate leadership. The union has also seen to it that Election Day is a paid holiday in virtually every municipality, all the better to turn out ground forces and flash mobs at the polling places to propel their candidates back into office. What's the quid pro quo when their candidates win? Why, doing as they are told when any legislation comes up which threatens rank and file public school teachers, whether they are effective or not. And there's the rub. Once again, we have elected officials knowing what's best for their constituents, then not doing it. In the view of recent revelations regarding failed infrastructure and programs at in Providence, your meek and unassuming Rhodey reporter thinks it's time for a real mutiny aboard the pirate ship Smith Hill. Hey, hey, can a guy get any school choice up in here?